if you see something, say something. Well, I've been seeing these signs around the Washington area for the past couple of years. I see them in the train station. I see them on the sides of buses. I even saw one in a restroom, though I'm not sure what I was supposed to be on the lookout for <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> I've also seen just a massive amount of media coverage about racial strife in America. And these two things coming together, these signs with this media coverage, has gotten me thinking long and deep about a racially charged situation that I was involved with around 20 years ago here in Washington, where I was the something that someone said something about. So I want to tell you just a tiny bit about me. So I grew up in New York, and in 1987, I came to Washington right after college, and I've been in the communications profession my whole career. So I've worked on Capitol Hill, I've worked in the White House, and for the past 16 years, I've worked at the Carlisle Group, as Dave just said. Uh, and I'm also a champion whistler. And I'll tell you more why that's relevant in just a moment. So after being in Washington for a couple of years, I was in my mid to late 20s at that point, I realized that if you are a low-income inner-city kid in Washington, the education system just doesn't serve you very well. So I decided to see if I could make a tiny bit of a difference. So I joined this tutoring and mentoring program called Vision Ministries, which was based in Anacostia, which is just across the, the river from here. And I got matched up with this totally awesome seven-year-old boy named Monte. And Monte was just filled with potential, and he was witty and charming and bright, and I just loved to spend time with him. So for five years, pretty much every Tuesday during the school year, I'd go from my house on Capitol Hill, and I'd drive to Anacostia, and we would meet. So one time when Monte was around 10 years old, he said, hey, can you take me to McDonald's for, for dinner because I haven't eaten? Uh, and I said, sure. So uh, we go to McDonald's, and so there's the 10-year-old African-American kid and me, the at that point, 30-something you know, white businessman hanging out in the McDonald's, and I'm the only white person in the restaurant at, at that time. Uh, we're just chatting, hanging out, and suddenly I sense something, and I look up, and there is a middle-aged African-American woman just standing right over us, just hovering over the table, just staring at me, clearly concerned. And I look at her, and she looks at me, and she says, what's up with you and the boy? <laughs> well, a thousand thoughts raced through my brain at that moment. I said, well, what am I supposed to do? Who is she? Does she think I'm a kidnapper or a, a pervert or something like that? Uh, should I tell her to take a hike? Is she a racist? Does she have a problem with white people? Am I a racist for thinking she might be a racist? <laughs> <laughs> or had she seen a sign that says, if you see something, say something? <laughs> well, I pondered. I pondered deep and hard of what should I do? You know, what should I do in that situation? And this whole concept of, of pondering deep and hard about you know, what should I do has been mo on my mind a lot, and I bet it's been on your minds a lot in recent years. When I saw Tamir Rice shot by police in a Cleveland park, I said, well, what should I do? When I see churchgoers in Charleston gunned down by a psychopath, I say, what should I do? When I see police assassinated while sitting in their cars in New York City, I say, what should I do? When I see professional sports players taking a knee during the national anthem over serious issues of racism, I say, what should I do? What should I do? I said, I think the answer is actually in the McDonald's. So there she is, she's hovering over me and says, what's up with you and the boy? And I know what I wanted to say. I wanted to say, take a hike, lady. I have a right to be here. But I didn't. What I did is I stood up and I handed my hand to her and I said, hi, I'm Chris Ullman. And this is Monte and we're in this Christian ministry together. And we're just getting a burger after hanging out, uh, doing our tutoring. And like Saul on the road to Damascus, the scales fall from her eyes, and she says, wow, we need more people like you helping out kids in our community. And we chatted for a moment, and just as soon as she had arrived, she departed, and I go to Monte, and I say, well, that was interesting. And Monte says, not a lot of white people in this part of town. <laughs> <laughs> out, of the ba out of the mouths of babes come such truths. So, so I've pondered for years, why did that go well? It could have been a disaster. It could have been a disaster, but it went well. So I'm a PR guy, and I tend to think in groups of three. So I came up with love, benefit of the doubt, and de-escalation. So we can take a quick look at each of these things. Love. Well, I was in that restaurant in the first place because I loved Monte. 
I wanted him to succeed. I wanted him to be able to use all of the, the talents God had given him to the greatest. And my faith teaches me that I need to love my neighbor as myself. It's in the Gospel of Mark. And the great civil rights leader, Martin Luther King, said many things about love. One that really stands out for me is when he said that love is the only force that can transform an enemy into a friend. So love is the foundation, and only good things can come from love, such as benefit of the doubt. If you love someone, truly love them, even if you don't know them, you will give them the benefit of the doubt. And I had no idea who this woman was. Why would I think the worst? I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. And then finally, de-escalation. When I was growing up, my mother had a plaque on the kitchen wall that said, great spirit, grant that I might not judge my neighbor until I've walked a mile in his moccasins. And that message of empathy has really seeped into my soul over the years and has taught me the power of offering someone a hand rather than giving them the finger. So love, benefit of the doubt, and de-escalation. Now, I get it. I'm a white man. Now, it's probably easier for me to love someone or give them the benefit of the doubt in a tense kind of racial situation. I understand that. However, Christ's message and King's message are universal. They are colorblind. It's how all of us should behave, even if it's difficult. So I mentioned earlier that I'm a whistler, and I have been able to take this very simple gift and share it with people, which brings people joy, brings me a lot of joy. And as Dave noted, I was here in 2013 and got to share my whistle with folks. And the point of that talk was that everyone has a simple gift, a very simple gift. Mine happens to be whistling, but each of you has a simple gift as well. And the key is to find out what your gift is, develop it, share it, and try to share it with people one person at a time to try to make the world a better place. And the key is one person at a time. I think we have a real hero-centric culture. We're waiting for the heroes to save the world. And folks, let me tell you, there aren't enough heroes to save the world. We need to do it. So it's very much an empowerment message about what we as individuals are capable of doing if we set our minds to it. And I think that concept can help us when it comes to healing race relations in America. Now, if this is on your mind and you're trying to figure out what you can do, well, there are many roles that people can play. We need the leaders. We need people to organize rallies, to call out injustice when they see it, and hatred and racism. We need people to write letters to the editor and speak out in street corners. All those things are important. They are critical. However, most people aren't going to do any of those things. So then the question becomes, again, what should I do? Well, I think the answer, once again, is found in the McDonald's, is to simply love people. Think about it. Every day, each of us encounters dozens, perhaps scores of people from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed. Literally, scores of people. What if we proactively decided today that we are going to love those people? We're going to love the people we know. We're going to love the people we don't know. We're going to love the people that are maybe make us uncomfortable or maybe in a sticky situation, if it's of a racial nature, for example. And the cumulative effect of people proactively loving the people they encounter, even when it's hard, will make a measurable, meaningful impact over time. So, the next time you see a sign that says, if you see something, say something, think about it differently. Think of it said, if you see someone, do something, Simply love them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.